What's up guys, Zachary Strife here with Zach's Tech, and we're going to do another quick video for you. This one is how to overclock your processor. Yes, I am going there, and it's going to be very easy, very simple. But the very first thing to say is, if anything happens to your computer, I am not responsible. This is just an informational video. If it, if it happens, it happens. Sorry. Um, but the first thing I really do need to stress is make sure you have your manual handy or a downloaded manual and print it off so you can tell where your CMOS is because if you fail, you can reset your CMOS and your computer won't be dead. So, let's just get going, okay? Alright, so the first thing we're going to need to do with our computer is restart and get into the BIOS. Um, hopefully when you're doing this you have already gotten all the information you need I am overclocking an Intel i7 6700k on the Asus Z170-A motherboard I know that my max safe voltage for a 24-7 operation is approximately 1.4 volts and I need to let you see what's going on alright so we have the BIOS screen we're gonna spam delete or hold delete uh, I'm a spammer because when motherboards were kind of old, you know, because I've been on computers for a while, uh, holding the button did actually work. Now, like I said, the max safe voltage for the i7-6700K is 1.4 volts. I'm going for a pretty mild overclock of only 4.5 gigahertz, so I'm not going to need that much. And I already know how much I need because I've already been through this process. If you don't know what you're doing and you have this motherboard, you can click Easy Tuning. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to manually do that. But first things first, on a fresh install, on a fresh build, if you're building it yourself and you have XMP Profile RAM, turn that on because it's not on by default. I can't click. Yes, XMP. You can do it here in the very first screen on the ASUS uh, BIOS. <laughs> Excuse me. Still waking up. Or alternatively, you can hit advanced mode, and it is the first thing you see in AI Tweaker. XMP is right here. All right, so we're going to get our frequency up to uh, 4.5 gigahertz. So with an Intel system, it is the B clock, so 100, times your core ratio, and that would be 45. So we're going to go ahead and sync all cores to 45. Enter. This should set, yeah, see up here, it should set the target to 4,500 megahertz or 4.5 gigahertz. That's not the only thing I want to do though because we're going to need to feed it a little bit more power. As you can see the power is at 1.264 right now and that is way too low. So we're going to go to manual mode and I already know that my processor likes to sit at 1.32 whoops 32 volts. So 1.32, enter. This is something you don't want to screw up. If you add too much, you have the potential risk of burning out your CPU. Very rare. It can happen. Just be careful. And if you don't give it enough power, you're going to have to reset the CMOS. And again, go to your manual for that information. It's usually a, a little pin that you have to pull out and put on a couple of other pins. It's called resetting the CMOS. All right, so got my uh, V core or CPU core slash cache voltage. It's, it's different things for different motherboards. I'm used to calling it V core. Um, 1.32, and then the core ratio is 45. That sets it at 4.5. We have our XMP, and we're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and save this. So exit, save changes, and reset. And look at all that junk that's changing. Hit OK. And this is where we cross our fingers, guys. I mean, I already know it boots like this, so it's not a big deal for me. But uh, if you don't know your, your dialed-in voltage, this is a long process, guys. You need to dial in your voltage, figure out your computer likes to sit, and let it sit there. Uh, but we are getting a boot. We are now currently at 4.5 gigahertz at 1.32 vCore. And we're starting, so that's good. Hello, Zachary Strife. Welcome back to your desktop. I hope you enjoy your overclock. Have a nice day. That is not all we do, unfortunately. There is more to the process. B 
because you have to make sure you're stable, right? Right. So the next thing I'm going to do is recommend a program called RealBench. And this program allows you to test everything at once. Man, my green screen is making me mad. <laughs> All right. So here's Real, uh, Real Bench. I'll put a link in the description for you. And we're going to go ahead and let that start up. Yep. And I'm also going to start up CPU-Z and Core Temp. And Core Temp doesn't read properly on all systems. I believe Ryzen still has an offset on some scenarios. So... All right, so you can see we're roughly at 4.5 gigahertz. It's jumping up and down because of the bus speed changes a little bit or the B clock. Um, but you can see we are at pretty much 4.5, and our temperatures are down here on core temp. So that's important because we're going to make sure we don't overheat. So with the stress test, I recommend going about an hour for my tests personally I'm going to go only 30 minutes and I'm going to go half of the RAM that I have that's just the way I do things you don't have to do the same way you can do a full you could do a 24 hour test with all of your RAM whatever I don't care I do what I want it works for me <laughs> everybody's different I usually do an hour to try, uh, st stress test and that's it because that's all I really feel like it needs um, but yeah you're gonna set your stress test up on real bench hit start and let it go to the races for the next 30 minutes in this case. Uh, but what we're looking for is our core temp to make sure that that doesn't skyrocket. I recommend staying in the lower to mid 70s if you can. And the way you adjust that is actually the V core. So if you're getting too hot at 4.5 or whatever you set your gigahertz to, you could try lowering the V core just a little bit. So like if if in this case I was at 1.32, I could try setting it to 1.31 and try to save a little bit of, of temperature here or there. Um, but this this current setup is going to hit about 76 uh, after about an hour, and that's more than enough because this is a 100 max load, 100% max load test, and in a real world scenario, that's pretty much not going to happen. Um, so. This is a very safe test for any computer, and yeah, it's going to take its time and do its thing. So, it's a long process. It does look like it freezes from time to time. It doesn't. But yeah, that's it, guys. Um, whoops. Well, that was weird. My video actually did freeze, but it's still going. Look, it's still going. It's okay. <laughs> that was really strange. My OBS actually froze. Um, anyway, that's that's all I got to show you. That's really easy to get going. If you're not stable, it will tell you that the results have halted. If it uh, continues through the test and nothing's wrong, you're good. And you can try to push it more. But as for me, that's where I sit, and that's where it wants to sit, and we're all happy. So... Yeah, real bench. Link in the description. I'll throw in CPU Z and Core Temp in there as well. Um, yeah, if you guys like the video, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new and you want to see more from me. I am a new tech channel starting out, so I need all the help I can get, guys. Please help. Um, but yeah, that's it for me. Okay, thanks. Bye. Zachary Strife signing out.